Hi everyone and welcome back. So let's talk about the MongoDB, uh, Mongoose architecture, sorry. So here we are talking about Mongoose, which is actually an ODM library, uh, object data modeling library for uh, MongoDB database. And what we can do is we can use this with the Node.js to interact with the MongoDB database. So the architecture is simple. What we are doing is MongoDB is a schema-less NoSQL document database. It means you can store JSON documents in it. And the structure of the document can vary uh, because it is not enforcing like SQL database. Okay, the user can have only email, which is unique, first name, last name, password, address, and all these things. You can insert anything inside a JSON document. Okay, so that, that is an advantage. But when we write a full when we write any kind of application we wanted to give a structure to the application so what we can do is we, we can use this mongoose as an object data modeling library where you can model the data whatever you are going to store in the mongodb because mongodb is not restricting you to store a particular schema because it is schema less okay so what we are doing here is let's say this is an example here, this is a SQL table where you have put a structure, okay, first name, last name, email should be the data inside a person table, person SQL table. But when it comes to the NoSQL, I mean, I'm talking about these very basic things because this is the first introductory video. So I will try to cover some basics and then we will directly go to the advanced. So this example is about the SQL where you can see the proper structure is there. But here, this is a NoSQL. In the first collection, in the in the user's collection, in the first document, here again, I'm using the terminologies. This is called table in the database, right? Table in the SQL database. Here, these are called collections. And inside collections, individual row is called a document. Here you can see, I'm talking about user collection. And the first document contains these five attributes, phone, email, last name, first name. Second document does not contain phone. Third document may not contain uh, some other attributes like first name, last name, only email, right? So the MongoDB collection is not restricting you to store some particular information. So we are using this Mongoose. You can see uh, the role of Mongoose is to define the structure of the object which you are going to store because what we are storing a JSON document. So Mongoose is providing a structure to that. It is creating, model is nothing but a class or interface. Here we are creating a model object, which is an instance of the object or instance of the document, which you are going to store. Now on top of that, you can do dot save, dot find, find by ID and all these methods to uh, fetch and store the information. Okay, so if you talk about the terminologies, what, what all things we have heard? We have collections, we have documents, which we are going to store, and then we have fields. This is the terminology of a NoSQL database. I mean, we don't have a schema, but what we do is, with the help of Mongoose, we just try to give a structure to the data which we are going to store, okay? And the models, models like we are going to create a models like user collections, student collection, product collections and all these things. Now, how all these things are going to work? We can, because we need MongoDB database to work, what all these things we need is, we have Node.js, right? For the APIs development, what we are going to do, we can use Express or Nest.js. And then we are going to use a MongoDB database. And what we can do is we can use a Docker container for that. And we need VS Code to write our code. And then we need NPM module, Mongoose. And let's say validator package. So these couple of things we need. Now, how to install a particular package in Node.js is simple using npm. You might have done it tons. npm install minus minus save mongoose. This is the, the way you will install this particular module in your database, in your project, right? And couple of other modules which you need, like I need UUID maybe for some need, crypto, bcrypt, express, 
body parser, cookie parser, and all these packages I need. Okay. So we will talk about all these things. So collection. When we look into the database, we will see all these things. Collections like user collection. User collections has rows. These are called documents, a JSON document, which contains the fields, username, password, password, first name, email, contact, phone number, blah blah. Okay. And all these are called models, like user models, which is a collection name. Okay. For MongoDB, these are called models because MongoDB, uh, I mean the Mongoose library will use these models to create instance and execute methods like find, find by ID, and all. Now we will talk about how to create database connections and all these things. First, we will talk about very basic things. You will install the Mongoose as a model. So how you can require it? You just do require. And you get the MongoDB instance, right? And now what you need to do is if you wanted to just define a simple connect method, like I wanted to create a simple connect function, what it will really contain. So let's say I'm creating a function connect and mongoose object I already have. So mongoose dot connect. Currently I'm not inside a project, so it will not tell me it will not auto populate the methods and all. So this is a MongoDB URL. And if everything is good, it will return a promise. If it is returning a promise, if it is resolved, that means console.log we are connected. Okay, you guys are already aware about all these things. If you are not passing a MongoDB URI properly, then you will get an error and you have to show this for now console.log error and most of the time we face trouble while connecting to mongodb lts mongodb cloud because you don't want to install mongodb or docker container and run you already have a mongo url and you wanted to try connecting with that this is a simple connect and then you can just uh, export this particular function so you will call this method by passing the URI. Let's say I'm passing the URI here. Uh, this is the method, right? And this URI can be simple like MongoDB server and the database. This will something look like this, okay? We'll talk about it. So here we are just talking about MongoDB connection. Now we will go one step back. We will first set up the MongoDB container, okay, using Docker. We are already running Docker. And then we will set up a simple project. And then we will start exploring MongoDB with Mongoose. Okay, so let's create a MongoDB container. So this is our Docker Compose file. I will do is Docker Compose up. It will create a MongoDB container and the Postgres container. In this application, we are using only MongoDB. Okay, once this is done, we can go to our target folder, which is the starter. This we are using for this video. Okay, so what we need to do is we are just getting started with the Mongoose. What we can do npm init, create a package JSON and we'll explore, explore a basics about Mongoose. If you already know, you can skip this video. Okay, and we can install Mongoose and Validator. These two packages I am installing. So we are doing these things inside a starter folder. So once installation is done, we can start using it. I will create a simple index.js file. And I will start using it. So what we can do is we can just use const, let's say mongoose. And here I can require it. This is how you will get the, the Mongoose instance in your Node.js application. And then after that, you will start defining the schema. Schema means a schema file which contains the models. Schema, let's say I'm creating a user model. 
okay let's understand it user model in the language of ORM okay here we are going to create a user model right and user model will have some type definitions I mean type definitions means some structure okay user will have a first name last name email address telephone that is a schema about the user collection we, I mean MongoDB is a schema less but through the mongoose we are trying to create a minimal schema or a structure for our model so we will create a schema let's say I'm um, create like what is the schema is let's say email schema I'm creating and it is new mongoose let's make it uppercase so we'll make a difference new mongoose and the schema is email is of type string this is the schema I have created right now these types like email first name last name all these can be of type array boolean date number object id string all these are types okay and then so this is the schema let's say i will convert this into user schema instead of email schema and here i started defining things let's say email is of type string first name is of type string right so what i did is i created a user schema and then you can define so last thing is creating a model so first we will create a schema and then from that we can create the model so here const user equal to mongoose dot model so this method we will pass and here you can pass the model name which you are registering and the schema object so this is the instance of model on top of that you will start calling method user.save you will create an instance of this and you will start calling save find find by id and all the utility methods which mongoose provides okay so what we are doing is we are creating a model so what we will do like let's say i will create an object of this equal to new user And I will pass okay email is this is the value and then once I have this this is what is this this is an instance of the model and I can do user dot save okay user now you can do all different kind of operations here so for now you can call user dot save which will return a promise you can do a sync await or you can do a dot then all these things we can perform okay you can also define lot of other things inside a schema not just simple okay let's say i have an email which is of type string but i wanted to, to define lot of things i also wanted to apply uh, email validations right so here you can extend this schema you can say okay type is a string and i also wanted to define all the all the different things required true what it will do so if in the schema you will define okay this is required this is optional some kind of validation you can perform okay so what all those things will help is whenever you are inserting this data through mongoose if you are inserting it directly to mongodb then there is no problem but here we are using mongoose mongoose is doing the the task of writing the data to the mongodb so mongoose will not allow the empty value of the email so before even inserting the data it will throw an exception for us you can also write a custom validate method so let's say i have a value here i can validate that this is representing some email or not so here i can use a validator library to validate if this is a email or not or there are many ways to validate if this particular string represents an email or not okay and here return validator dot is email and this is the value so if for inserting it will do all those kind of validations and the same schema we have updated now this user model contains before inserting it before inserting this email it will validate that this email this is required true type of type is string 
so what we are doing this schema can be as complex as you want you can define n number of arguments okay there is an email and i also want to define first name and here also you can just say is type is string and required is true so if you try to do the save here it will fail because we are not passing first name which is should be there okay now it will work i have first name and email both are required and i'm passing it okay now how we are going to create the record i will show this end to end running like how to connect to the database and all so what we will do is we have created the object of this and we can just simply say is user.save it will return a promise user.save simple because in you this is an instance of that schema model this user is a model right and this is an instance of it so we can do a dot save and this will return as the promise and this will return the created document for us so here we can just do console.log document if there is an error that means there can be n number different type of error let's say the validation error or you are not passing the correct email console.log error and before even running this code you need to make sure that you are connected to database properly or not so we will be using mongoose.connect and all these things so this is a simple save right now if i wanted to find if i wanted to find insert update delete there are multiple methods right so all these things can happen on this object here we created the instance here we can do uh, operations directly on to the model name itself user dot all the different methods you can see now you can also see find find one find by id remove all these methods are popping up right so what we can do is we can simply find and here you can specify the criteria okay i'm looking for email it should be equal to test at the red gmail.com if this is there then return me all the records matching with this criteria so this is how this odm works and this is the same way you can do update delete and all these things let's say i wanted to do a update so there are methods update many update one i wanted to update many you can actually pass the criteria right uh, let's say update many and find one and update this is also tricky right what it is doing it is doing a find and then setting up the value so find one and update so what all argument it is taking if you see it is taking uh, two objects first is the criteria so i wanted to update email where email is tested there at gmail.com and what i wanted to update this with is if you find these kind of documents set the new email and uh, you can also define the the rule is like if this doesn't find if you are not able to find email with this then do you want it to create a new one like absurd if it is available then update this one otherwise create a new record and then dot then the whole chain will start again okay if everything is good you will get the document otherwise you will get the error so these are the basic operations every orm odm provides find find by update delete here instead of find and update we will have another method is find one and delete you can see find one and delete remove find one and update find one and delete many right so these are like some helper methods you are getting so overall what we are doing we are creating schema and then we are creating the model and on top of that model you can call all these methods find find one find one by id update delete and all and we will if we go into the depth about the mongoose how it works then we can talk about the mongoose virtual methods static methods how to define the schema 
how to create the models, how to define the validation criteria and all these things. Okay, so let's see the advanced things about Mongoose which are like, okay, how to create a model, how to define the queries, how to create aggregation, what are the static methods, virtual methods in the Mongoose and also how to connect. We have seen the, the connection script which is mongoose.connect, pass the MongoDB URI and you will be able to connect. So here we are already running a container and you can simply create a simple connect function here mongoose.connect let's say if I wanted to connect here dot connect right so here you will have to pass the the URI and the how, how the URI looks like this is a simple mongodb URI mongodb localhost 27017 this is the port which is being exposed from the container you can see 27017 and your database name like test db if you are connected then you are good you will get the promise result otherwise because it is returning a promise either it will connect or it will throw an exception if it is not able to connect okay something like this so let's get started with the real deal with the mongoose okay so let's see this uh, live uh, i created a docker container there was one mistake the the ports were specified here something like this okay obviously that is wrong because this port i wanted to put for mongodb not for postgres so i corrected this typo and then I restarted the container and here we are doing node index.js so we should be able to connect to this and here we are connected and you can see the records also right because what we are doing first we are inserting user.save it is inserting the records and it is returning us then we are doing find test at the readgmail.com if you are able to find that then return this and here also we can do console.log okay i did update and return me that record we can run this again so we are connected and we are you can see the email is updated wherever there is an email test at the readgmail.com replace it with the test2 at the readgmail.com all the emails are updated okay so this is just a simple example like uh, how to connect to the mongodb database and what all different ways we will be able to call the different methods on the model object so we created a schema using new mongoose.schema this is the schema we have created then we have created a model from that schema object and then we can actually call all these methods so this is the one part of it now if you wanted to integrate it with the node.js it is simple whenever you wanted to hit a rest apis what you will do either you will insert update delete find some operation you will performing right so you will be connecting to the mongodb database on the application bootstrap and then you will be running all these operations on the mongodb using mongoose model object like we are doing with the user so there are other concepts also like mongodb query builder uh, let's talk about this let's say i wanted to write a simple query builder where i wanted to do fetch different records with the different criteria and all so i'm doing dot find here you can specify your create criteria when you're not passing anything means you wanted to return all the records and here you are doing you can also do the pagination okay i'm skip skipping the first 100 records and then i'm limit, limiting my response to these 10 records and then i wanted to do the sorting all these methods i think are available do sort based on first name so if you are passing i think one that means it is ascending order and whatever you wanted to select okay from the whole document i wanted to select only first name 
So it will return only first name in the response and then you can execute this query. This is how you will execute. This will return a promise and you do a dot then. This will return you the document. Okay. This is the kind of a query builder you can do what we are doing. Find all the users, skip the first 100 records, limit the whole result set to the 10 records, sort the result by first name, select the first name only and execute the query. So Mongoose provide uh, this nice and clean query builder. Apart from that, we are going to extensively use Mongoose middleware. So what all different uh, things which Mongoose provides. So we'll talk about the query builder. I mean, you can write a custom queries, middleware and instance methods, static methods. Okay, instance methods, let's say whenever I'm doing this user dot, right? These all different methods are available for me, user dot find, find by ID and all these methods. But let's say I wanted to create some custom method on top of it then I can use these instance methods to run those kind of operations. You can see, you can write your own custom static methods or instance method. Middleware are, you already know what is middleware. Something which pre-executes like, okay, I have a user and I'm creating a user. I wanted to encrypt a password of a user before saving it in the MongoDB. You can use pre-middleware of a Mongoose where you can get the user for a password uh, encrypt it, convert a base64 or whatever and then save it inside a database. So it's not a user cannot read or cannot interpret what is the actual password in the database. So let's say I have this user model. I have a password field also here. So what I can do is I can update the schema. If I wanted to have a password field also here, and this is not a string, this is string with S capital. This is the type, okay? So what I want to do is, if I wanted to customize something, right? So what we are doing is we are creating a schema. So I think user schema dot pre, there should be a method. You can see there is a pre method. What pre method will do is, this is a hook as a middleware. What is a middleware? As something as some execution we are doing and then forwarding the request to the next step which is same as the node.js middleware right so pre means before you wanted to save you can see this method is save then before actually saving you execute this method and if everything is done call the next method that's it so this is a middleware you are adding in the mongoose and here you can play with the password Okay, I wanted to change the password to something else. So that we can do with these pre and post middleware. Now another uh, thing you can do is here you can do a lot of things. You can create, you can also define these static methods and instance methods. Let's see these things in the MongoDB uh, Mongoose documentation. Okay, how you can define all those things. This is how you can create a middleware, pre, post, I think a lot of things are there. If I do post, is it there? Yes. If I do pre, save, post, like after saving you wanted to do something, like you wanted to populate, create a date, update a date, all these things you can do with these kind of hooks. These are called pre and post hooks. So this is a simple documentation like uh, how to connect to the database. This is your MongoDB URI, mongoose.connect. Here you have, so, I, okay, I don't have a big uh, schema. Then I can just create the model in single line, mongoose.model, model name, and this is the schema. Okay, I don't have multiple attributes and I don't want to create a separate schema having name, username, first name, last name, it's like cat. Cat is the, the name of the cat, the, the brand of the cat, uh, features and all these properties. I just have a name so I can specify the schema here. You got the model. You start creating the objects and do the save, find and all different methods. Okay, we'll go to the documentation. The important part here is 
these things okay so query helpers first of all defining your schema which we have already done like i wanted to create a blog schema where i have a title all these properties comments is of type array date is of type date default is this hidden is boolean so this is what we are doing here is we are creating the model we are creating a schema and through the schema once the schema is done what we do is we create a model so step one, define a schema. Step two is create a model. And step three, start inserting, updating, deleting data. So here we got the model. And then you can actually create the instance of this. And you do the save, update, delete, and all like this. So first schema, we got the model. And then you create the instance of model and document.save. OK. You can see this ID is number, right? And here we didn't set the ID in this document object. So it is saying is, okay, document must have an underscore ID. Here I set the ID before saving it. And I'm doing await document.save because it is returning promise. So you can do await it directly. Now, the important concept is instance methods. Okay, instance methods means there is already a defined, predefined methods, find, find by ID, find by, up, find by ID and delete, find by ID and update. But you wanted to define your custom methods, okay? Find similar user IDs, find similar user with emails, find similar user with organization. These kind of custom methods you can define on the schema, not methods. Like uh, here I have a user schema. So what I can do is user schema dot. Yeah, I can create my own custom methods. And here your method name, okay? Find. It looks like you are creating a prototype. That's it. Okay, and here this is a function with callback. And you define this method here. Okay. <clears throat> And whatever the custom query you are returning and return the callback from the response. So here, similarly, I can do simple is user.find type, let's say email. Whatever the email we have, test at the rate gmail.com. Okay, and return the callback because this is the callback based method and it will work. Now you can call the find similar user this method on top of all the user instance, all the user model instance. Okay, similarly, there is a static method. Static method you can directly define like this. So you can also add a static functions to your model. There are two equivalents way of doing it. Either you define like this or animal schema like this. Here you can creating the static method directly. Okay, query helpers and all those things. You can add these custom query helpers. Animal schema dot query dot by name. That means you wanted to search something by name. So I, what I did is I created this custom query helper and I can use it in my actual query to the database. Animals dot find by name. By name is not something which Mongoose provides. You created a custom version of it. Something like this. Okay, and then indexing and all these things. So these are, this is the primary documentation, like how to create a schema, how to create a model, and what all important things. The middleware is important thing, like how you can write your custom pre post hooks. Uh, let's say here, before saving something, I can, I wanted to do something. Pre save, post save. Once you are able to save, you want, you can do something else. Like you wanted to encrypt some password, or whenever you are able to save, you can do some logging. Okay, the user has been saved, user has been updated, post. So all these things you can do. Once the schema is initialized, once the data is validated, once the data is saved, once the data has been removed. So you can actually get the hook. These are like hooks we are adding on top of this. We can also add asynchronous hook. All right, something like this. So this is about very basic things, okay? How to create a models. Now the uh, the complex things is, okay, 
how to define the associations, how to store the different data types. Okay, I have an array of addresses for the user. I have an array of uh, courses for the user collections. Should I create a different collection? or should I create an embedded reference of two collections so that I can use only single collections? Okay, all these methods are here. Whatever we are using, update one, update many, find by ID and update, all these methods. Okay, how we are creating connections to the MongoDB database, simply create connections as promised and ready state. I mean, sometimes you wanted to check what is the connection state. Okay, that's it guys. So let's get started with the advance. Maybe we'll write a simple CRUD and then we'll start writing multiple collections.